Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's like this big girl. I'm surprised to be fair if you were watching the training. So, I was especially forcing you to put it in. No, no, no. It would be me, you know, only 30% from the game. If you were watching the session, you were told that. Never easy to get found out. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, so, broadcast, broadcast session first with Jane and then we'll do a written sketch. Thanks, Max. Good afternoon, Slavin. Good afternoon. Uh, just start with some fitness news. Uh, Michael Antonio was just here a second ago. He looks fit. He's ready to go. Yeah, he's back. He's fit. He, uh, he played last week when we played Man United on Sunday. Mm. He plays for under 20 freeze on Friday. Mm. Uh, it was a plan. It was part of the plan, yeah. and he looked really good then. Like he's in shape. He's been training with us for two and a half weeks now. As I said, he done 90 minutes on a big pitch in a official game, 423. Then he joined us in training, back to us for the trainings, and he he looks good and he looks uh, he looks ready, of course. Then yesterday, uh, Sheku Kuyate. And then the Carol, they started to train with us. So they done just a couple of trainings with us, and uh, that's basically it. We're gonna see with them, of course. Okay. They they had a, especially Andy. He had like a long layout, you know, yeah. for for since since I don't know since March or or that or April. And Sheku uh, had few weeks off, like he missed. Basically, it happened in the beginning of the preseason in our first training in Austria. So uh, that's two of them. And Manuel uh, Lanzini, he's he's joining us in training. He's training separately, individually, and he's joining us on Monday. So uh, we're gonna have a full squad back uh, for a Newcastle game. Still, for this game, we're gonna have 100 percent. Mikey Antonio back. For the rest is. Uh, for Sheku and for Andy, it's a bit too early, I think. Uh, was there some harsh analysis after the defeat at Old Trafford? Or not harsh analysis. It you're not too concerned, it's still very early. Well, also, I said after the game, I had a feeling here in my stomach, and I still have a bit of it, you know. Uh, that's, 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 uh, you can't say, okay, you can't say, oh, it's Man United, or it's that, or that. yeah, but we should have done, done, done a bit better. And uh, especially when it comes to last couple of minutes or last few minutes, you know, that uh, we didn't give up individually. We've done our best and all that, but it wasn't very smart and it wasn't like you don't have to, to, to like crumble and we crumble because it's not the same if you lose 2 nil and 4 nil, you know. So uh, we made analysis. Uh, I wanted to find the balance, of course, between criticizing and talking about what wasn't good, because obviously some of the things were not good enough. But on the other hand, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, uh, you don't want to lose a bit of confidence because of one defeat. Mm. So it's, uh, so we done that balance, and uh, we looked really good this week on training, and uh, I trained today, and, and tomorrow we have, of course, light session, yeah. and then. Uh, we want to approach the game against uh, Southampton in a very, very positive mood. Of course, knowing what what we have to do to get to get anything out of that game, because again, every game in the Premier League is very difficult. Uh, we are playing against a team that done really well, that is doing really well, and they are very consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter that they are changing yeah. the managers, but they are not changing the players a lot, they are not changing the way they are playing and all that, and they are doing really well. Uh, what's the latest on William Carvalho? Are you confident getting that done? And I will he be the, the final that. piece in the jigsaw? I don't know. We're going to see what's, uh, what's happened there with, with ins and outs. You know, uh, like it's very busy. It's becoming even more busy in, in, uh, in other clubs. And so uh, also with us, but I, I left it to the board. I left it to the chairman. Mm. And with the people who are who are involved in in ins and outs, and I'm concentrate uh, only 
and totally on, on, on our game against Southampton. Karen Brady said that 17 of the 20 Premier League clubs would be in favour of the window closing early. Would you be in favour of it closing early as well? Yes, I mean, it is, uh, it is, it, it is mutual from, from me and the club. We are on the same line, of course. Mm. Uh, just I, I would like that to happen. It would help everybody. Mm. But... Uh, for me, it has to be across the leagues, yeah. because uh, otherwise then there's no point. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know, but ironically, it would put the it it would put the clubs even in a worse situation that you would still lose some players if if the clubs from abroad want them, mm. and you want to be able to replace them. You know, so if it's it would only pro it would only protect us in terms that no other Premier League clubs can take your players. And your, let's say, Coutinho situation or whoever, that wouldn't stop Liverpool of losing him, but it would stop them of finding the replacement for it. So for me, it's a great idea. I'm the first one who is definitely yes, yes, because like this is like you are really you are starting the pre season. With one team, you are finishing the pre-season with the other team, and then when it starts, uh, you go like... Some teams are, are like losing like 30% of the team or whatever. It's, it's a new team, it's different. And uh, for me, it would be much better if you, if you... It doesn't have to be at the start of the pre-season, of course. But let's say but maybe before the first game of the season. Before the first and game of the Europe. season. It should be, and definitely should be across Europe. Yeah. This is giving the people around football a lot of time to speculate, to 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 like uh, think, to act, and all that. And uh, it's definitely the hardest for the managers and for the board. You mentioned the continuous situation and similar situation with Diego Costa as well. Without wishing to make a comment on those particular situations, do you have sympathy with? Jurgen Klopp, Antonio Conte, because you had something very similar last season with Dimitri Payet. When the player decides he doesn't want to play for the club anymore, what can you do? Of course I have the sympathy, you know, for that. And that, what you asked me before, that would stop, at least when the season starts, it would stop those kind of moves that the manager... I mean, um, you want to you wanna have your team, but you want to be concentrated only on the game on Saturday. And you are not because of those things. Uh, of course, I have a, I have a sip. It's it's harder for them. And sometimes, sometimes you are on the other side of the story. You know what I mean. Sometimes you are in position that you are getting the player and all that. But but uh, but it definitely it doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't help the managers. Do players have too much power now? Are they able to hold clubs to ransom? Yeah, but the main important. Uh, what is very, very important and what gives you strength as a manager and what also gives you strength uh, as a club is, and it weakens a little bit the strength from the, of the other side, is that you're on the same line with your board, that you're on the same line with the chairman and that, that, that is very important because then you, you personally, the manager, the chairman and the club uh, first of all, it's it's becoming uh, really, really powerful. Is so you have to be on the same line. Has the balance gone too far now? Or is there anything that can happen in football to stop players having I don't this know, much you power? Know, you, know, you know better than me, or as you know, I definitely do. As much as I know that 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 the power is too too much on the side of uh, the player and the, the players and the agents. Do, and it's hard for the manager, although sometimes you are, you know, you are in the other situation. And I was a few times in that situation, but what I, what, what, uh, I never recommend the player and I never suggest and I never ask from, from the player, because make no mistake, we are sometimes on this side, sometimes on the other side, but I never, ever advise or ask from the player to stop training, to stop the uh, that, that, that's low. That is low, to be fair. And it shouldn't be like that. Thanks, Levin. Thank you. Cheers.
one, one real positive I thought out of last week was, was Declan Rice's performance. And as you know, this is a club whereby <coughs> it's traditional and it's important that young players come through the academy and play for the first team. You must have been delighted with his display. Look, we, we are never, although it's nice to have those kind of situations and it's like a bonus, let's say, and all that, we are never trying to force it. I did, did, well, I didn't go. Well, okay, let's put him, you know, to to gain some what, you know. Uh, but he uh, he's a boy, uh, very matured for his age, very very good for his age, very he's thinking about the game. Plus, he's 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 got the quality definitely, and he impressed everybody, the players, the staff, the I don't know. West Ham family, you know, and me, of course, in the preseason, he played almost every game. Okay, we played with the whole, 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 whole squad there, and he basically he forced. Uh, he wasn't in the plans from the beginning. Let's be honest, you know, he was there very important because in the beginning you need players because you want the first few preseason games to be played two times 45 minutes and all that, but then you see he's doing well there, then next one he's playing, he's doing well there, he's doing well there. So, uh, I mean, it's too early for for the kid, uh, but uh, is he improving or is he doing really good? Yes, he is. And uh, definitely the reason, okay, we had some injuries. Some players, as you know, are coming back now or in two weeks' time, especially from that from that area in midfield. But uh, he came on against Man United only because he was really, I was confident that he can do it like, like this. Because he did it already in the last couple of months. He came on against, against Burnley last eight minutes or five minutes, I don't know. And it wasn't like... Not not important game for us. It was very important game for us, and it was two one for us. And Burnley was trying to equalise. We put him because he was best option for us then. So Reese is uh, uh, still. It can go either way, you know. He is. But, so I don't want him. I don't want to praise him too much, you know. Despite I think that he and his family are totally down to earth, and they're gonna be focused and stay focused. But still, there's no, no reason, no time, and no, and no uh, space to, to make like now new, new whatever out of him. He's still very beginning. He's still very low, you know. But is he doing well? Yes, he's doing well. Yes, he's doing well. And just one other from me, and it's not really West Ham related, but last season West Ham moved into a big new stadium, and, and all the problems that, that you had regarding that. I'm talking about the football on the football side. This weekend, Pochettino and Spurs move into a big stadium that isn't theirs. And what, what advice would you give them? Because many people are saying they may have the same sort of problems that West, in terms of playing some, not talking about anything else, I'm just talking about in terms of getting used to playing in a really big venue when you're not used to it. I don't know. We found it different. And it wasn't only us. It wasn't only us. It happened to few clubs or to most of the clubs who change the stadium from going to one compact stadium to a big arena, as you know, and a lot of them have done it because uh, the new modern st stadiums, they are multifunctional, you know, and you need that kind of space and everything. So I don't know uh, how will they react. Uh, but again, you know, there's no magic formula to go around that and to find a shorter way, I don't know, but uh, all I'm saying that last year, last year they were, they were, uh, I wouldn't say struggling, but they found it more difficult to play in the Champions League uh, than they, it wasn't that, that intensive. It's, it, it didn't look that great, let's say, because let's be honest, home in Premier League at White Hart Lane, they were very, very impressive in the Champions League. And it, all, and it wasn't always against top, 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 top clubs, you know. They, it was very hard them to, to close the opponent down and all that. 
I don't know. I'm not too bothered, to be fair. <laughs> but no, but... but uh, They will need some time to, to adjust, although they already played a few games at Wembley. Seven, hello. Can I ask you about your, your new signing up, Joe Hart? I know he conceded four goals, but what impact has he had on the dressing room since he's been here? Well, John made a big impact. He's, he's number one England's goalkeeper, and uh, he's very vocal in a most positive way. He's very vocal in trainings also, in a game. And that's what you need, your goalkeeper, not to be the only one, but to organize the defense, to shout and all that. Um, so we are very, very, ha very happy with him so far. So we have really two really good goalkeepers. And uh, yeah, it's good. Um, Andy Carroll, you said back in training, He's constantly suffering from injury problems. Is there anything he's trying to do because there's a World Cup at the end of the season? He's trying anything different to stay fit throughout the season? Oh, look, uh, yeah, we, we tried even before we tried, or we were trying, but it didn't happen uh, now. Us as a club and him personally, it would be wrong to think about the World Cup. We all should think about next 10, 10 games or a uh, few months. And then hopefully, if it's good, then we can build on that. Unfortunately, so far with such a long layout, uh, you can't you you can't think and plan that 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 long term. You know what I mean. So, but our aim, our aim, we 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 are trying to to find a solution that's gonna make him long term fit and all that. But for that, you need you need him to start playing games. We don't want to rush him now in a game against Southampton, no matter how much uh, sometimes he's very, you know, that he's got, not sometimes, always he's got a great impact on the bench, on the pitch, but, but we don't want to go into the situation like that after a few days of training he, he plays for us. Maybe in that game he would be great, maybe in that game he would score the goal or whatever, but so far that kind of the approach have, have caused like uh, new injuries for himself. So, of course, we, wanna, we don't want to drag it too long, but, but uh, he has to do a, at least kind of a short pre-season, you know, before he, he enters the pitch. And on, only in that way he, uh, we can maintain, he, or he can maintain to be, to stay fit and then if that comes, he can think about those things that, that you mentioned in the beginning. Um, if Philip Coutinho does leave for Barcelona, are you worried that Liverpool will come for Lanzini? Has that crossed your mind at all? Uh, no. Well, well I, uh, I got it from the papers and all that. Max, Max, because uh, those stories, he, he emails me straight away, so it makes me a little bit to to shake me a bit <laughs> but but uh, no I said it last week we spoke about that uh, before Man United game I think uh, uh, I speak to Manu every day you know that he is very happy he wants he, to stay he here. really feels it uh, he feels it at home here he feels wanted, he feels like, uh, you know, you, you can feel it, you can see it. You don't have to talk to the players, but especially if you talk to him, you see how he's smiling here, how he's happy. He broke into a national team of Argentina. Despite he was injured or he's still out, he, he's got a call from call up for, for, for a September game. So he knows if, if I'm playing here for West Ham, the time, I, if I have a good season for West Ham, I have a chance to improve, to sign a better contract with West Ham, and and to play for Argentina. So he's very happy here. And you don't want to set a price tag on him if Liverpool do get 100 million for Coutinho. What would it cost? No, no, no. I, I'm sure he's going to stay with us. I'm sure he's going to stay with us. And he felt like, the, you know. <laughs> 
came back. So I want to <laughs> go on and whatever. No, no. You know that he's wanted. You know, as I said, the chairman and the board. We we. He was on loan, and we took an option even before 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 we had to. We activated it. He was voted the player's player of the year, which is also, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. It makes you feel really wanted at the place. He likes it here. Thank you. Time is up.